right. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Hey, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning to you, and thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, the In the Backyard, Pastor Perryman. Hey, as you can see, we're not outside this morning. We had to come inside because of the weather, man. The wind is just blowing so hard. Been blowing non nonstop since yesterday, so, hey, so we had to come inside this morning. Hey, but nevertheless, everything's going to be great today. So y'all do us a favor, share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party this morning. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard Pastor Pyramid. Again, we're inside today because of the weather. The wind is just blowing so hard, so we had to come inside today. But I need y'all to share. I need y'all to like. I need y'all to tag. I need y'all to invite. I need y'all to start a watch party today. Encourage other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard Pastor Pyramid, all right? Let me give a big shout out to those who are on Instagram today. Big shout out to those who are on Facebook Live this morning. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Hey, shout out to my wife, Pastor Sophia, who's on this morning. Hey, my Uncle Neil Brewer's on this morning. Shout out to Miss Angie Marion, who's on this morning. Miss Shirley Powell is on today. Miss Shayla Roby is on today. Uh, shout out to my brother, Timothy Price. Miss Terry Parham is on today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Miss Irene Holmes is on this morning. Good to see you guys. Thank y'all so much for tuning in today. Hey, shout out to Minister Kim Simmons, who's on this morning. Good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. So listen, y'all, share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party today. Get as many people as you can to come on and be a part of it in the backyard, Pastor Perryman, all right? Shout out to uh, uh, Miss Bambi, who's on today. So good to see you guys. So let me get some of this amazing coffee that we're going to have a great time, all right? Shout out to Miss Crystal, who's on this morning. Good to see you. Hey, my auntie Dorothy Perryman is rocking with us today. Good to see you, and thank you so much for being on. So let me get this coffee that we're going to take We're gonna take off. It's a really good coffee. It really is. So let's get to it today. Last year, I... Uh, hey, James Calhoun is rocking with us this morning. Uh, last year, um, I was trying to figure out a gift that I wanted to get for my wife, and kind of looking through some things and went to the mall a few times and, hey, Ashley, yeah, went to the mall a few times and kind of didn't see some things that I wanted. And so what I did was went online and went to this particular store and started looking at all of these high fashion, high end, high price purses and found the one that I liked. Don't really know what cross body purses are. Don't know what tote purses are. Don't know what satchel purses are. Didn't know anything, but I just know that looking at these purses, they look good. And this one particular purse stands out to me. And I'm looking at it, and I want to say it's almost like a tote type purse or what have you. And I'm looking at, oh, this is the perfect color. It's got all of this on it. It got all of that on it. So I ordered that, and I ordered a bracelet and everything to go with it. And I'm waiting on it to arrive at the house. But uh, I think it was uh, uh, FedEx or UPS or whatever ring the doorbell and I go out. There's the big box that I ordered. Bring it in and I give it to my wife. And she goes, what's this? I said, this, this is for you. And she, this, I mean, this box is huge. She opens up the box. And inside of that box is all of this, you know, bubble wrap and all of that stuff down in there. And all of a sudden what you see it's this little purse about this big. I almost lost it. Because here I am, thinking that I ordered this big, huge purse. And I'm looking at it, and the first thing I start to do is apologize to my wife. Honey, I'm so sorry that this purse is this small. I thought that this purse was much bigger than that. When I looked at the images on the page, the images made it seem like this purse is this big, and I'm sorry. And she goes, don't be sorry. I like it. I, I, and she starts to say, I like it. Uh, I can do this with that. I can carry this one. I go here. This will, this will work with this. This will work with that. And But in my head, I'm feeling like a failure because it was not the size that I ordered. Now I got to go back on that website. I'm looking on the website and I find that purse. To my surprise, I did not read the small print. Small print says <laughs> the images that's on this page may appear larger than what they really are. I didn't see that. So here I am. I'm caught up in what the picture looks like, but I'm not looking at the dimensions. And there are many people today who are watching me that here's what the devil has done. 
He's taken small things in your life and he's magnified them and made you see them as really being bigger than what they really are. So, so what is he doing? He's causing you to worry about stuff that you have no business worrying about because God has already taken care of it. He's causing you to put focus and energy and effort into things that God has already taken care of. So here you are wasting your time, wasting your energy, wasting your effort, being frustrated over this and frustrated over that, not realizing that the image may appear, may appear bigger than what they really are. It's appearing larger than what it really is. And the reality is, is the devil does that to you in order to get you off track. He does it to make you lose focus. He does it to make you lose sight of what God is doing for you. Watch now. Usually this happens when God is about to give you a major breakthrough. The devil doesn't know exactly when the breakthrough is coming, but, but he can sense that you're getting close to it. And so here's what he does. He turns the heat up on you. And so what he does is he makes you look at an image. He makes you look at something. He makes you focus on something and he makes it to pe makes it appear be bigger than what it really is. And so now here you are stuck putting all your energy and all your effort into this. I was doing a study on this just a few days ago. Had scientists came up with this term for 30 years. They've been running with this term called boundary extension. Boundary extension says that when a person looks at, a, looks at a, a scene, they either add to the scene or they take away from the scene. It's called boundary extension. And they say it has something to do with your, your hippocampus and your brain. So when you, look at a, when you look at a scene, you either add to the scene or take away from the scene. But then there were another group of psychologists, I mean, another group of uh, uh, professors who came and said, nah, we don't know if that's true. Let's do a test on it to prove if that's true or not. So what they do is they give 2,000 people 1,000 images and ask them to draw the image. To their surprise, the 2,000 people with the 1,000 images, what they did was they drew the image, but they added things to the image that was not there, and they took things away from the image that was there. So in a sense, they call this boundary contra contradiction, a boundary contraction. In other words, the brain is looking now at an image and the brain now determines what should be there or what shouldn't be there based on its experience. I'm talking to somebody that needs you to walk with me here. Well, what does that mean, Pastor? In other words, here's what you do. You look at the image and based on experiences, you either add to it or you take away from it. Okay, That experience is based on what you've been through in life or based on what you have heard in life. Okay, Let, let's deal with this for a moment so I can get people to get a better understanding of this. See, if you've experienced a man in life or a woman in life and this woman has cheated on you, that's an experience that you have. So when you get in the next relationship, you get in the next relationship apprehensively thinking that it's a possible chance she may cheat on me, he may cheat on me based on the experience that I've had before. So watch this now. You are adding to the picture or you take away from the picture based on your experiences. Watch now. The other part of this may not be your experiences, but it may be somebody else's experience. It's based on what you heard. Watch now. You, you heard big mama and them. You heard your mama and them say, a man is going to be a man. Child, a man going to be a man. He just going to be a man. So, so watch what you're doing now. You have an experience of man cheating you on you. You have an experience of man abusing you. But big mom and them told me, my mama told me that a man is going to be a man. So when I get in this relationship with a man, I'm expecting him to be what my mama and them said. I'm expecting him to be what big mama said because big mama and mama is an authority in my life and they painted the picture. So now here you are. You're looking at the picture. You're either adding to it or taking away from it based on your experiences, or based on what you have heard. I'm talking to somebody today, and here's what the devil does. He brings experiences in your life, and he magnifies your experiences. He drops a thought in your head. I've been here before, been through this, and I know what to expect with this. Yeah, girl, see, when, when a man starts getting up, and he starts changing his look, and he starts, you know, doing certain things that he wasn't doing before, so he's doing something, he ain't got no business. And so now, based on an experience, you think that that's the case when the reality is the brother could just be going through a midlife crisis and he's shifting and changing, not because he's trying to garner attention, but because his life is changing. Same thing with a woman. Well, you know, 
She used to go do this at this time. Now she ain't doing this. And so now what the devil is doing is dropping thoughts in your head. So now you're becoming the person who's like private eye. You, you look, you checking out everything that she's doing. Cause this don't seem right. This ain't on point. I don't know. That's a little bit different right there. Could it be that maybe she's going through a midlife crisis or maybe she just want to change some things? It, it may not be because she's looking for another man or it may not be because she's got something to hide. It could be. It could be. That she's just changing some things about herself. But the enemy, based on your experiences, makes you look at it in a negative light. Mm, I, I got a three-day pay quit before. If I heard come with this money, I'm going to lose everything. That's based on your experiences. And so the devil drops thoughts. He drops ideas. He puts images before you. And he leaves them there. And he lets you add to the scene or take away from the scene. And he causes you to worry and it causes you to lose your train of thought, causes you to lose focus, and now you're not able to go to the next place in your life, or you're not able to trust God and believe God like you should, because what you're doing is looking at the picture, and you're adding to the picture, or you're taking away from the picture, and what you're adding to the picture is not there, and what you're taking away from the picture is there. Okay? What do you mean? You're adding stress to the picture. The picture was never meant to be stressful, but you're adding stress to the picture. You're adding anxiety to the picture. You're adding worry to the picture. You're adding frustration to the picture. You're adding a lack of confidence to the picture. But the reality is the reverse is there. But what's the reverse? The picture had no stress to it because God is the picture. It had no worry to it. It had no anxiety to it because God is the picture. It had no lack of trust. It had no lack of confidence because God is the picture. And so here you are. You're looking at this thing. And the devil is making the image appear bigger than what it really is. And so now here you are, you're buying it without looking at the fine print. What's the fine print, Pastor? The Bible said the devil is a liar. Scripture says the devil was a liar and he's a liar from the beginning. You didn't read the fine print. You didn't read the fine print where the fine print told you <laughs> that this situation is subject to change. You didn't read the fine print. You didn't read the fine print that said that this situation can change, that God can turn it around. At the drop of a dime, he can turn it around. He can shift it. He can change it. He can move it. He can mold it. He can make a message out of it for you, but you didn't see that. And it's because the devil makes you look at the picture and you're not reading the fine print. May I tell you today that the devil cannot bless? It's not in him to bless you because everything about him is a cursed thing. So anything the devil gives you is cursed. Anything that the devil says to you has poison in it. I'm talking to somebody today. Back in Mississippi, we, there, there was a store uptown called Piggly Wiggly. Now, you got to be from the South to really know something about Piggly Wiggly. And, and we used to go to Piggly Wiggly and, and do our shopping in town. And, and one day we went to Piggly Wiggly and they had this, this little package that had a rat on it. I think they call it Ratcon or something like that. Anyway, what it was, it was poison for the rat to eat to kill it. My granddad said, we got a, little, we got a few field rats around the house. I'm going to put these pellets out there, and the rat's going to eat it, and the rat's going to die. I'm looking at these pellets, and I'm confused. Like, what in the world would a rat want to eat these pellets for? Don't make any sense. Mm. Didn't make sense. I woke up the next day, and there was a few field rats. It was outside by our porch dead because what they had done is ate, ate the, pill, the pellets and they died. I couldn't understand that. That don't make any sense. That don't make any sense. Why would this rat, why would these rats come and eat these pellets? Why would they do that? And I came to the, yeah, my, 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 my cousin says decon, decon. And I came to the realization after I read the package. It may have changed now before that, but the package said that the pellets was 90% wheat and 10% poison. So here's what the devil does. He, he masks the pop, the pop. He, 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 he masks the poison by giving you some of what you like. The rat couldn't detect the poison because it was too busy smelling the wheat. I'm talking to somebody today. So here's what the devil does. He, he packages this thing in such a way that it makes you <laughs> focus on it. And you're not realizing that what it's ready to do is to kill you. He makes you look at the at the bill. If I if I don't have this bill paid by this and this day, all of this is going to take place and that's going to take place and I don't know what I'm going to do and this, this, and that. And so now here you are. 
stuck like a truck in the mud because you're focusing on this and not realizing that there's death attached to this. The Bible tells us like this, that every one of us goes through some things in life. Scripture says that you have not experienced anything that anybody else has not experienced. If God brought other people out, he could bring you out. If he could turn it around for them, he could turn it around for you. If he could shift things for them, he could shift things for you. If he could make it work for them, he could make it work for you. If, if, if he could do that for them, and we know he has, he'll do it for you. Because what God does for one in principle, he must do for you. And, and so I'm trying to get people today to stop worrying about stuff that is of no importance. Hey, well, what, what you mean? In Matthew chapter 6, and we look at verse 33, the Bible tells us, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto us. And so we get happy about the things and the addition that God has given to us. We get happy about the things and the addiction. The addition God is adding to me. Hey, glory, if I just seek first the kingdom, he going to add to me. And so here's what you do. You tithe, that's seeking first the kingdom. He going to add to me. You give, I'm seeking first the kingdom. He going to add to me. I go to church, I'm seeking first the kingdom. He going to add to me. I pray, I worship, I do all of these things. This is me seeking the kingdom and God won't add to me. God, whatever. God, I don't know what to do right now, but I need you to help me. I'm seeking first the kingdom and God's going to add to me. But you didn't pay attention to the scripture itself. The Bible says again, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amplified Bible says his way of doing business and being right. And then he says, all these things shall be added unto you. Mm. You can't write a passage of scripture. I learned this from Ms. Hutchinson and Ms. Phillips. You can't say uh, all these things. Ms. Hutchinson and Ms. Phillips was, was my teachers in school. You understand? I learned from Ms. Townsend every day with my English teachers. So, so you can't put in a scripture or in a sentence or in a letter all these things and not tell me what all these things are. To me, that's English one-on-one. -on -one. If you say all these things, I need to know in scripture where all these things are. So what things are you going to add to me? So you got to go back and start looking at Matthew 6, 25 and read already into 33. And Matthew 6, 25 says, it like, says to us, take no thought for your life. And it tells us, don't focus on certain things for your life. What you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to put on, what you're going to wear, what you're going to be clothed with. So what is it saying? He's naming out the things. It's the personal things that you need to survive in life or to make it in life. So he says, don't put no thoughts and no effort into these things. And then he gives you an example. He says, look at the birds. They get up every morning. And they get up and they have breakfast. They have lunch. They have dinner. And guess what? Your heavenly father feeds them. He said, the grass looks good every single day. I'm the one that clothes it. And at the end of the day, I'm the one that throws it in the oven. And I do, I do it all over again. So the grass, don't, look, don't worry about what it's going to look like because God got it covered. The birds don't worry about whether they're going to get fed because God got it covered. How you know the birds don't, don't worry, Pastor? Because I get up every morning, look out my window, and I see the birds. Right in my backyard, eating like they eating like they lost their mind, like they eating at a smorgasbord out there. The food is already prepared for them. They're not stressing out and they're not worrying about it. So the text really is talking about you worrying and stressing out over things that God has taken care of. So here's what the devil does. He makes you worry about stuff that God has already taken care of. So here you are, you are taking thought or you are doing what I call signing for the package. When, when the guy... Delivered that package to the house. When I went out there to get the package, he said to me, I had to sign on the dotted line. He brought out this, this big old brown pad or whatever, and, and, and I and had me write with my finger, my name. So I, you know what I'm saying? You ain't never seen my signature. It's interesting. It ain't me. It's just, that's it. You know what I'm saying? My signature is unique. Can't nobody copy my signature. Can't nobody do anything with that. That's my unique signature that I've been developing since I've been in the second grade. You understand? So I've had that signature from the second grade. So watch now. When I sign for the package, that says that I take ownership of this package. I sign and said I received this package. Now I'm responsible for this package. So watch now. When you start to sign for the thoughts, what are you saying? I'm taking ownership of the thoughts. I'm taking responsibility for the thought. When you sign for the package of worry, you're saying, I take ownership of the worry. I, I take responsibility for the worry. So now here's what the devil does. He makes the issue that you're worried about seems much bigger than what it really is. And you have forgotten that God has already taken care of everything. The Bible said that God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He's taking care of that. Scripture says he give you houses that you didn't build and vineyards that you didn't plant. He already took care of that. And you didn't realize it because you're too busy looking at the image and not realizing that the image may appear bigger than what it really is. 
So here you are. You're angry and upset with your children because they're not doing the things you need them to do. They're not living the way you need them to live. Maybe they're in a stage right now where they're talking back to you and y'all getting into it. And so here you are. You're about to write them off. It is because you're looking at the image. The image is appearing much bigger than what it really is. And what you don't see is the underlining issue, the underlining factor that's taking place. I never forget. I was on the road preaching somewhere. Can't remember if it was Chicago or Indiana. Um, could have been up in the Bay Area. But I'm on the road preaching. This lady comes down to the altar. No, no, I'm in L.A. I'm in L.A. This one, man. I'm in L.A. I'm in L.A. in the hood, 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 hood. You understand? Somewhere over the east side, deep over there. And preacher had called me and said, hey, uh, Pastor Perryman, uh, man, how you doing? I'm doing good, brother. How you doing? I ain't really had no real conversation with this dude before. We just done talked one or two times. And so all of a sudden, he calls me on the phone. Hey, man, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. How about yourself? I'm doing good, man. Man, I'm having a revival, man, and the preacher was scheduled to preach, man, and he can't make it. I said, oh, man, I'm so sorry I'm to hear about that. Well, at least you got, you got time to put it together. Like, yeah, that's why I'm calling you. Can you fill in for him? I said, sure, man, I can do it. What, what day is it? He said, it's tonight. I said, tonight? He said, yeah, it's tonight. I said, when does it start? He said, it starts in an hour. Can you be here? I said, man, I'll be there in an hour. I'll be there in an hour and 30 minutes, man. I can be there. I ain't going to make it an hour. I'll be there in an hour and 30 minutes. You know what I'm saying? I got to get myself together. Got to get my, got to hurt me, write my lesson, put it together. What is your, what is your thing? But you know what I'm saying? I need an hour and 30 minutes to do this. And he says, okay, I'm over there in this dude's church in LA, way over there on the east side over there by Vernon, way over there, way over there, way, way over there. You understand? This deep in the hood, you dig? So here I am, I'm going in there and I'm preaching. After I finish preaching, this lady comes down and she's got her, her son. He couldn't been no more than 12. And she's going to bring him down to the altar. Pastor, I need you to pray for him. He just acting like a demon. I'm looking at this boy, looking at her. First thing hit my head, this boy ain't no demon. This boy ain't acting like no demon. I done seen some demons. This, this boy ain't one of them. You know what I'm saying? This boy ain't one of them. He's he not one of them. And I said, well, what do you need? What, what's wrong with him? He just acting like a demon. He's just going crazy. And I'm looking at the little boy and the little boy, he don't want to be up there. I understand little boy don't want to be up there. Mama done made him go up there. And so now she, she drug him up there and he he he's looking at me, I'm looking at him, and I smile. What's up, man? How you doing? And he reluctantly says, Hi, how you doing to me? When I'm getting ready to pray for him, God speaks to me and tells me, This boy's problem, and the reason that he's rebelling and acting out is because this boy's daddy died. That's why he's acting out. And he's hurting, and his mama don't know how to deal with it. So I looked at the woman and I said, hey, um, where's his daddy at? And she don't say nothing. I said, daddy's dead, huh? And, and she, she said, well, yeah, the little boy now. You can see tears coming down his eyes. And I said, yeah, God just told me that his daddy is dead. That's the reason that he's acting out. This boy don't have no demon. This boy is missing his daddy. And I said, and God says the reason that this boy is acting out is because the day his daddy died was the day his life stopped and yours didn't. And she goes, huh? I said, the day his daddy died was the day his life stopped and yours didn't. What you kept on, what you did was you did not stop when his life stopped. You kept going. You kept partying. You kept going out. You kept hanging out. You forgot that this kid is hurting. And that's why this kid is acting out because his life stopped and yours didn't stop. I said, this kid's daddy has probably been dead about a year. And she goes, well, well yeah, yeah. I said, you should have stopped your life at that moment to deal with your son. Hanging out with your friends is irrelevant during this time. Going to the club is irrelevant at this time. All of that stuff is irrelevant at this time. Your child is hurting and you can't see it because you're too busy focusing on you. His life stopped and you didn't see it and you kept on doing what you were doing and you forgotten that it was not enough but you two go to him and say, I know that your daddy died. I know your daddy died and I'm, mama's praying for you. Yeah, no, you, you and him weren't together no more. Wasn't y'all been, y'all been, y'all been away from each other for a minute, huh? And she go, well, yeah, yeah. I said, so, so him dying, it, it didn't affect you like it affected him. So you had sympathy that the, that the son died. I mean, that the, that the daddy died because y'all had a relationship and you had some sympathy because it's your son's father. But what you didn't do was stop your life. You were supposed to stop your life 
to spend time with this kid, to nurse this kid back to health. And instead, you've been trying to dump prayer on it. Hey, glory, all of this type of stuff. And, and I'm going to put prayer on it and all this type of stuff. You can be as religious as you want to be. Your child needs your help at this moment. You can't be running around Shando and all this stuff all the time. Your child needed you to stop your life and you didn't pay attention to it. So you're focusing on what is small, not realizing that there's a bigger pit. That you're focusing on this. This is a small thing. He's acting out because he lost his daddy. And you went on with your life. You done got you another man and you went on with your life. You ain't stopped to pay no attention to him. That's all you've done. And so he's rebelling and acting out because he's hurt and you can't see it. And so what the devil does is make you focus on his rebelliousness at this moment, not realizing there's a bigger problem and you don't see it. You don't see it at all. And if you don't get it right, you're going to lose this kid forever. I'm talking to somebody today. You, you have to stop focusing on the small picture and start looking at what's real. The, the devil knows how to make your image, make your, your situation feel bigger than what it really is. Not realizing that this kid is just hurting. He lost his dad. I said, I don't know. If he lost his dad to gang violence, if he lost his dad to an accident, if he died of some, some issue or whatever, I said, I don't even want to know. But I'm not going to pray for him to be free from rebelliousness. I'm going to pray for you to be a mama at this moment. And the little boy turned and grabbed his mama, and he crying big time. Cause I don't hit the nail out of, I don't hit, the, I don't hit the ball out the park. This is one thousand percent accurate, and this kid is crying, He's holding on to his mama, and his mama is still confused. Well, well, I said, see, that's the problem. You won't acknowledge that you're focusing on something that is not there. You cannot solve this problem being religious. You can't solve this problem. This kid needs your attention. And until you give this kid your attention, you're going to see this problem become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger to the point that there will be no respect for you at all. You're going to see this problem magnified to the point that this kid will not have the love for you that you need, that you are expecting from him. And this kid will end up in the system because you didn't stop your life. You're too busy focusing on what's not the problem. And there are many of you today, you may not have been in the situation at the moment, but what you're doing is focusing on what's not the problem. I, 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 I watch a lot of YouTube videos and stuff because I like to stay up on what's happening in the world today. You understand? And see, I know, let, let me just say this, and I got to hurry, get out of here. See, I know that a large part of the people who watch me are, are from the hood. So... I have to stay up to date on what's going on in the hood so that I can be able to communicate with my people appropriately to be able to talk to them about what God is saying. So I'm watching some of these OGs from Chicago and they're talking about in their younger days how they didn't have no problem with killing people and doing what they do. But now they done got older, they done survived the wars and they done got older and they start to realize that having a conversation with my ops or with my enemy is not a bad thing. That we can put this stuff to the side. We can get money together. We can be better together. And what we were doing out there as young kids was stupid things because we were not thinking. And that's what the devil does to you. He makes you think that family members are your enemies. He makes you think that your mama hates you. He makes you think that your child hates you. He makes you think all of this. And now, all of a sudden now, as time goes on, you look back over your life and you say, this was not that serious. There are people who are watching me today. Whether you're a blood or a crip, whether you're a GD, VD, whatever the case may be, may be BD, whatever, vice lord, dash the sacral, whatever the case may be. You're on here today. You're fighting to protect the hood, protect the neighborhood, protect the set, protect the color. And at the end of the day, none of it does anything for you. I'm talking to you today. You on here today. I don't care if you blood, pyro, crip, whatever the case may be. You on here today. You're fighting, killing, and dying over a street that ain't even yours. And at the end of the day, these streets ain't loyal. I'm talking to you. You on here today. You, you repping the color. You've been repping this color for years. And, 
And guess what's happening to you? Nothing. Ain't nothing good happening for you. Ain't nobody Ain't nobody there for you. The homies that you did dirt with is the one who turned the snitch on you. The homie who was with you is the one who's in the ground and God allowed you to live and allowed you to survive. How many more funerals are you going to go to? How many more times are you going to bang the hood at 50 and 60 years old? How, how long are you going to do all this crazy stuff before you come to realize that ain't your enemy. The enemy is the devil. The devil knows how to pit black people against black people, white people against white people, white people against against black people, black people against white people, Hispanic people against Hispanic people, Hispanic people against blacks and blacks against Hispanics. How long are you going to do this and live this life before you realize that banging the red rag, banging the blue rag, banging the five star, the, G, the GD, the VD device, that that ain't going to get you nowhere but in the dirt or in jail. And so now here you are stuck like a truck in the mud. You got every, you got all the tattoos all over you and you can't even leave your neighborhood for fear of looking over your shoulder. Who coming for me? Who coming after me? Because of all the dirt that you have done. And you're sitting here not realizing that you have allowed the devil to plague you. And so now you're stuck looking at this. you 60. That's my enemy. Dude, you ain't got no enemy. You know what your enemy is? Your enemy is arthritis. You know what else your enemy is? Your enemy is tiredness. You understand? You need some Geritol at this moment. That's what your problem is. This is not your enemy. Physical, physically is your enemy at this moment. Your body is breaking down. You understand? That's your enemy. You can't run like you used to run. You can't do the things that you used to do. That's your enemy. And you're not paying attention. You're too busy focusing on some stuff that don't make no sense. And so now... You're teaching and training it to the next generation. So, baby, born in, born out of the womb, got a red rag on the head. Born out of the womb with a blue rag on the head. Born out of the womb with, I'm vice lord, I'm GD, I'm dancing with disciple, I'm all this. No, you crazy. That's what it is. You just crazy. That's what it is. You just crazy. That's what it is. You dying for a street that ain't loyal to you. You trying to be, you trying to have homeboys back who don't have your back because long when they put that 25 to L in front of you, well, let me take you back. When they put that that six month to life and six months in front of some people, they gonna sing like a bird. I'm they telling everything. Yes, it was Big Crip. It was him. It was Big Pyro. It was Big Blood. It, it, look, he did it. They tell everything, and so here you are rolling with these fools, and your life is taken. Your whole life is taken because you are focusing on that which is not the issue. I am not your problem. You are not my problem. The devil is the problem. And people don't pay attention to that. It, it, that you don't pay no attention to that. I know I, I have to be real. I have to be real with you because the person that you're fighting with could have potentially been the president of the United States. The person that you're fighting with, you and him could have potentially got together and started a Fortune 500 company that could have net that could have net billions for your people, billions for your neighborhood, billions, and you tripping and you losing your mind over some stuff that don't make no sense. And so here you are, focus on the problem, not realizing that there is a God who's bigger than the problem. And so now you stuck like a truck in the mud. Can't get a good job now because you got a felony record and you got a lot of them. You can't even sneeze loud without the parole officer coming to your house. That, what, you sneeze loud? Uh -huh. but, yeah, let's check. When you do, do, do a test, see if you've been smoking. That's to set your butt up to take you back to the pen. You done got in the system now. And so now, you still banging the hood. When you gonna stop? I don't know who you are. You're on here today. But when you gonna stop? When are you gonna stop? You a female, you banging the hood. You a male, you banging the hood. How long are you going to bang the hood before you go bang your butt down in a chair and sit down or bang your butt down on the couch and sit down? You understand? When, when are you going to make that decision so that your life could be better? You are focused on hood politics and you know nothing about the political thing that's taking place in the world. You don't pay attention to CNN, MSNBC, Fox News. You don't pay attention to none of that, but you know all of the hood politics. You don't know nothing that's going on around you because you're too busy focusing on things that are not that important. And so what the devil does is make us kill one another and not realizing I am not your problem. You are not my problem. The devil is the problem. What happens if the people got together and said to the devil, I see you. I'm closing with this part. Isaiah says the day is coming when you get to heaven 
And God exposed, when God exposes the devil and shows you who he really is, the Bible says your words will be, is this the man? This is the one who created all this chaos and confusion? Him? And you're going to look at it and say, man, him? He did this? And you're going to see him from the perspective like, I could have beat you up a long time ago. You the one caused the problem? That's how you get into Twitter wars and Twitter beef with a dude who talking crazy. And then when you see this cat in person, he don't look nothing like what he portrayed on television or what he portrayed on the internet. And so it ain't even worth beating him up. It ain't even worth shooting him. It ain't even worth getting it in with him. So the devil says, when you, when the, so God said, when you see this devil, you're going to be like, him? You are the one who did weaken the nations? You are the one who caused chaos and confusion? You? That's going to be your mentality when you see him because what he does is he makes himself to be bigger than what he really is. Let's close with this. The devil has already been defeated. Jesus had defeated him in open combat. But here's what the devil does. He makes things to be bigger than what they really are. I'm talking to people today. I need y'all to gain this, get this, so you can be better from this. Doesn't matter what neighborhood you're from. Doesn't matter. I'm specifically talking to those of you who gangsters on here for real. Whether you're a man or woman or whatever, you on here. I'm talking to you directly today. Or whether you you got you got friends that you're still chilling with and hanging with, and they're going to eventually see this message. What is the purpose of you doing it? You don't have no clue as to why you're doing it. People in your neighborhood have been fighting and dying over a color and over a neighborhood that they don't even belong, that don't even belong to. Red is a color that belongs to everybody. Blue is a color that belongs to everybody. When God created the blue, he didn't say, all right, for those of you who live on Compton, live in Compton over there off of Bullets, on Pyro, over there on Pyro Street, y'all, that color's for y'all. For those of y'all who live on Pacific and Long Beach, that, that color's, the blue color's for y'all. If y'all don't stop it with this foolishness, God gave this stuff to everybody for enjoyment. And now the devil make you take what God said you are supposed to enjoy and he took it and he used it in a different perspective. And so now here you are, never able to produce in life, never able to go to the next level of your life because you're stuck like a truck in the mud. I'm talking to you today. I'm talking to you today. It's time now for you to just say, I'm going to really come to God for real. How many more of your homeboys going to die? How many more funerals you going to go to? You understand? How many, how, how many more you going to throw parties for after they dead and gone? How, how many more candles are you going to put on the sidewalk? This big homie. How, how, many, how many more, how many more uh, t-shirts you going to get with the homie's face on it or with the homegirl's face on it? How, how many more? How, how many more? You done lost track of how many, ki- how many folks done been killed and dead behind this stuff. How many more are you going to keep going to prison behind some stupid stuff like this? How, how many of you going to be just relocated to just your neighborhood and in order for you to really get some peace, you just can't move from L.A. to Long Beach because you might run into somebody. So now you got to pick up, you got to move all the way two, three hours away just for you to get a little bit of breathing room. And, and then you can't relax then because what you've done is when you move out because you moved away from the hood and you still got the hood mentality, here's what you did. You went and found the hood in San Bernardino. You went and found the hood in Palmdale. You found the hood in Moreno Valley. You found the hood in Riverside. That's just what your mentality is. You moved out of the state, but you still went and found the hood. You moved to Las Vegas and guess what you did? Found the hood and guess what you didn't do? Still didn't find peace because you didn't change up in here. I'm talking to somebody today that your life must mean more to you than that. Somebody else's life must mean more to you than that. I know this may not be a popular message, but you'll get over it. You'll get over it. I'm not your enemy, but I'm coming here today to pray for you today. I've done a few gangster funerals. They're not pretty. Because I'm looking at a young kid that didn't live to see 21. And I got to stand over him and do his funeral. How many more? How many more? before you make a decision that I'm not going to let the devil magnify this image, that this ain't that big of a deal, that this not that important. I pray this resonated with you and that it blessed your life. I went too long this morning, but I felt that there were some things that need to be said today. Maybe it's this coffee that my wife made, or maybe it's just James Calhoun watching me and he made me say all these things. You know, maybe that's what it is. <laughs> let me, I'm getting ready to pray for you today. But let me give some shout-outs to people this morning. Shout-out to my girl, Miss JL, who's on today. Shout-out to her. Shout-out to Miss Tiffany Barnes, who's on today. Shout-out to you. Thank you so much for being on. 
Um, man, there's some other people I saw your face go across the street. I'm gonna say something. Uh, I'm gonna say good morning to you later on. Maybe I'll go back and write you, write you, and say thank you for watching today. Shout out uh, to Miss Marucka Yates who's on today. Shout out to you. Thank you so much for being on. My heart breaks when I see us take the life of a young person for no real apparent reason. What y'all arguing about and fussing about and fighting about can be handled with just a sit-down conversation. And two people got to be willing to hear one another and be willing to say, we come together to sit down and talk about it, not so we can be more divided, but so we can be in agreement. If we could just get people to be like that, things would change all over the world. Things would just change all over the world if we could just do that. <laughs> hey, shout out to Miss Valerie who's on this morning too. Good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. But listen, let me pray for you. Let me pray today. Today, I want to give the day out to every person who's on here who's a gangster. Today is your day. I, I'm not going to try to even call names out uh, because I don't want to show no disrespect and no dishonor to anybody. But if you're a gangster on here, whether you blood, crip, pirate, rule, whether you vice lord, whether you gangster disciples, whether you any of that, whether you El Rook, whatever the case may be, whether you, you know, you Latin kings or you Longos or whatever the case may be, today is your day. And the reason that we say today is your day, it is because I want you to know that God loves you in spite of. It's your day today. So only you know who you are on here. You ain't got to say it's me. If that's what you want to do, that's your too. Do what you want to do. But I want you to know that today is your day today. So let me pray for everybody. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person who's watching me today. I ask in Jesus' name that you would bless their lives greatly today. Help us, God, not to focus on things that are minor, but help us, God, to focus on the promises that you have given us. You said in your word that all of the promises in him are yes and amen. And so, Lord, I just thank you for it today. I thank you for your death on the cross. You said without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sins. So thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for every one of us today. And I thank you today. Now, Father, I pray that you make our souls happy this morning so that we might glorify you and give you praise today. Now, Father, I lift up the country of Belize. I pray for every Belizean citizen, God. I pray for their peace, their prosperity, their healing, their hope, and their deliverance today, O oh God. Father, I lift up my town, Itabina, Mississippi. I pray for my town's peace and prosperity. I pray for grace and mercy to cover my town. I call every citizen of my town blessed in Jesus' name. And God, I thank you right now that as I'm praying now, I lift up the Delta and I speak the blessings over the Delta in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, got to get out of here, but do me a favor. Get your seed in the ground today. Go to our website at kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground. Don't let the devil tell you that you cannot sow, you cannot give, but get your seed in the ground tonight. I mean today. And um, yeah, if you want to sow directly to me, you can do it through the cash app. The cash app is the dollar sign, Pastor C. Perryman. Uh, for my wife, it's the dollar sign, Pastor Sophia. Get it in the ground today. We appreciate y'all so very much. So hey, listen. I want to say thank you to everybody who tuned into our podcast last night. Had a great time doing the podcast. Hey, we believe that we touched a lot of people's lives last night. That's what we're about, is about touching people's lives. So thank y'all so much for tuning in. And tonight, be a part of our Kingdom Life Bible study tonight. Uh, in tonight's Bible study, we're going to be talking about battling lustful desires. So hey, if you're the person who battling lustful desires... You got to come on. Lust just simply means to have evil loans and evil cravings and evil desires for that which is not in the will of God. So lust is more than sex, all right? So if you got if you got lustful desires and you're trying to get free from them, you need to be a part of this Bible study tonight. It is going to bless your life. It's going to bless your life. Uh, I'm really past my time now. Uh, this Sunday is, uh, well, not, not this Sunday. Let's not go there. Let me talk about the women's small group. If you haven't signed up for my wife's women's small group, you need to do that. You got to do that. Sign up for the women's small group. It'll bless your life. The women's small group is just for women only. You go to our website at kingdomlifefaithcenter.org, and what you want to do is click on the small group link. You'll find the women's group uh, on there. Sign up for it. It'll bless your life. If you already have the church app, all you have to do is click on the connect button, when you click on the connect button, the first image you're going to see, it says join a small group. You can either click that and join the small group or right under it, it will say women's group. 
And all you have to do is click on that to join the women's small group. It's available to you right there. That's all you have to do. Now, if you click on the women's small group right now, it'll try to get you to join a meeting that's not in session yet. All right? That group, small group starts at 6 p.m. So you got to be a part of that. It's going to bless your life. We have made it so easy for you to be a part of the women's small group. So connect and be a part of the women's small group. It's going to bless your life. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter what state, what country, what city, what town you live in. You can be a part of the women's small group. So please do that. And this Sunday uh, at Kingdom Life Faith Center is Love Sunday. And this is where my wife and I are going to come together and talk about the love that makes the difference. Love Sunday is about love. So we're going to talk about lo a love that makes the difference. So you got to come on and you got to be a part. We are a growing church that's going somewhere. And where are we going? We're going to the masses. We're going to reach the masses for Christ. So be a part of that. Partner with us. Connect with us and let's grow together. All right. So, hey, I appreciate every one of y'all for doing that. And then this Monday, Monday coming up on our next podcast, we're going to have Pastor Linda G. Hodge on. And she's going to be talking about her new book, Matters of the Heart, Eight Keys to Practicing Self-Love. Got to come on. That's my spiritual mother. So you got to come on. My wife and I, that's our spiritual parents. So I'm going to be interviewing her and it's going to be great. So you got to come on and you got to be a part. All right. So, hey, I love y'all. Appreciate all y'all, but get your seed in the ground today. Get your seed in the ground today. And man, it's going to be a blessing because this is good ground seed, good ground soil, all right? So I love y'all. I appreciate y'all so very much. Oh, I didn't, oh, I did. I gave everybody that. I gave somebody that day, all right? Love y'all. Be blessed. We'll see y'all again uh, tonight. Tonight at 7.30 p.m. Battling Lustful Desires. You, you got to come on, be a part, all right? Love y'all. Be blessed.